Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, October 18th, 2019. I am Fredicia Leibert. A retirement luncheon was held for Augustine Merchant at the St. Paul's Anglican Church Hall on Thursday, October 17, 2019. In delivering remarks, Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, spoke about the legacy of Merchant. One of the things I can safely say to you this afternoon, he was always big on training. Gary is the one who is the manager at the abattoir. In 2004, Mr. Merchant was responsible for getting Gary off to Jamaica to get some training in meat cutting and processing and the likes. Now, just about 15 years later, Mr. Merchant would have organized a training session between the Department of Agriculture and Sinkage, that's the abattoir division, and the Department of Agriculture abattoir division here in Nevis. That was about two weeks ago. And the facilitator for that training session was Mr. Gary Griffin. And that speaks volume in the sense that the training that most of us would receive from time to time, we take it for granted. We go abroad, spend about a week or whatever the case might, might be. But then we do nothing with that training. But Mr. Merchant would have ensured that not only Gary got the training, but additional persons were able to benefit. And over the years, he would have worked tirelessly to ensure that the abattoir division gets certain pieces of equipment and also additional items that are needed to make sure that we are providing um, the necessary meat cuts and products to our people here on the island. I wish you well in retirement, but I also want to welcome you back to some work because I do believe we can work together still and I don't want to lose you and I don't want anyone to pick you up before we can sit and have a chat and see how you can continue to make that impact here on the island of Nevis. So I want to say uh, thank you. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to bless your entire family because you would need their support as you get on in, in, in the years to come. And I do want to say to them as well that at any time that I'm called upon, I'll be happy to play my part. The retiree then said a few words thanking persons for showing their support. I'm really, really pleased that you have taken the time out to come here this afternoon. My career has been a very exciting one, very, very, very exciting one. Didn't start that way, uh, but through trials and tribulation, through overcoming some shortcomings, I've been able to make it, and I thank God for that. Merchant also expressed thanks to those who have helped him to get where he is today. He told stories from where he began and said he was humbled by the amount of love and support he has gotten. Remarks were also made by his past student, Antonio Liburd, who read the profile of the retiree. Former Minister of Agriculture, Livingston Herbert, also made remarks as well as Aika delegates and friends of Augustine Merchant. The Deputy Governor General, Her Honor Hailita Liburd, and Mr. Liburd were seated at the head table with Augustine Merchant, his wife, and two of his daughters. The Civil Aviation Division wishes to advise the general public that all drones or similar devices must be declared to and registered with the Customs and Excise Department upon importation into the Federation. In keeping with the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, Convention Doc 7300, Article 8, and St. Christopher and Nevis Civil Aviation Flight Safety Regulations No. 6 of 2014, all drone operators and owners must seek and obtain permission from the flying or operation of drones for the flying or operation of drones from the Nevis Air and Seaports Authority, NASPA, and St. Christopher Air and Seaports Authority, SCASPA, as a result of safety and security concerns within the Federation. The following guidelines are to be followed once permission is granted. The light unmanned aircraft is to be flown or operated within the line of sight of the human operator at a maximum range of 200 meters, less than 400 feet above the ground and during daylight conditions, among other provisions. 
The aircraft is also prohibited from, one, operating within five kilometers from the seaports, example, Long Point Port, Port Zante Cruise Terminal, cargo ports, marinas, gas bulk areas, and airport approach and departure or takeoff paths both in St. Christopher and Nevis. Two, operating higher than 152.4 meters or 500 feet above the ground. Three, operating closer than 152.4 meters or 500 feet laterally from vehicles or an open air assembly of people. Four, operating in populated areas including over highways, beaches, stadiums, sporting events, or festivities without prior permission. Five, operating within or over restricted or prohibited areas including the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, banks, military bases, police stations, fixed or mobile, prisons, official residences, government buildings, and residential areas, etc. Six, operating at night or in low visibility conditions without prior permission. Seven, deploring or dropping unauthorized objects or articles from the aircraft device unit to the ground while operating in controlled airspace. Once permission is granted, the operator must adhere to or comply with all instructions given by NASPA or SCASPA in the interest of safety and security. All concerned are kindly asked to govern themselves accordingly. Still to come, Minister Ian Liburd advocates for greater public education on water conservation across the Caribbean region. The details right after this break. Taxes are the lifeblood of a nation. Feel good about what your tax dollars do in Nevis. As a responsible citizen, your tax dollars protect our environment. Pay your taxes on time. This message was brought to you by the Inland Revenue Department, Nevis. Be a responsible citizen. Welcome back. Prolonged dry spells and drought-like conditions have become more frequent in St. Kitts and Nevis and the wider Caribbean region over the years as the climate continues to change. The reality of reduced rainfall means that sources of potable water, such as aquifers and springs, will be negatively impacted. We have to educate our people that if rain doesn't fall, then our aquifers won't be recharged, our surface sources won't be recharged, says Honorable Ian Patches Liburd, Minister Responsible for Water on St. Kitts. The Minister's comments were made on Monday, October 14th at the opening of the 28th Annual Caribbean Water and Waste Association CWWA conference and exhibition currently taking place at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort. The five-day conference is being attended by regional ministers as well as water experts and international partners. Minister Liburd added that Caribbean leaders have a fundamental responsibility to address the associated challenges of reduced rainfall, which would require improving infrastructure and finding new sources of water. This can include desalination, a process that takes away mineral components from saline water and drilling new wells. One way to address water shortages that can be implemented right away and at a fraction of the cost of the two above-mentioned methods was highlighted by Minister Liburd. We have to educate our people about conservation, the minister stated. Political leaders have to also create policies whereby we educate our people that this water is a public good that we must recognize for what it is worth. Minister Liburd said that the St. Kitts Nevis government readily accepted the opportunity to host the CWWA conference for 2019 as it complements the administration's firm belief that coming together and sharing experience and expertise can only redound to the benefit of regional cooperation. The Ministry of Human Resources within the Nevis Island Administration, NIA, held an orientation seminar for its new public servants today, Friday, October 18, 2019. 
The NIA's orientation seminar took place at the Emergency Operations Center at Long Point, where Premier of Nevis and Minister of Human Resources, the Honorable Mark Brantley, was present. The public service has many benefits. I think that many people see public service as some place you go when you can't find anything else. And I'm urging you all not to see it that way. The reality is that what you're doing is of critical importance if Nevis is to grow and to develop. Many of you who might be or you might know people who are and have been in the service for decades and they would have seen different administrations, different political persuasions, it really ought not to matter. What matters is the quality of service that you give. And the reason for these seminars is to seek to say to you that you ought to equip yourselves. These handbooks I know are handed out, which set out the civil service rules. You are the ones who, when an administration changes, and as sure as night follows day, administrations will change. You are the ones who are charged with continuing the policy of the government. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Human Resources, Edson Elliott, was also present and made a presentation on the rules and regulations of the public service. He spoke on the conduct and discipline of public officers, appointments, promotions, transfers, termination of appointments, retirements, salaries and increments, and leave provisions within the public service. Other presentations were made on the Public Service Dress Code policy by Delcia Bradley King of Training Assets, Judy Barrow of the National Caribbean Insurance Company Limited on the National Insurance Medical Scheme, and Donovan Herbert, Senior Manager of the Nevis Branch of Social Security on Social Security Benefits. Virginia Herbert, Executive Officer in the Ministry of Finance, chaired the seminar. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredisa Liburd. Thank you for viewing.